Welcome to Polish with Ray. I'm Rachel and today I'm going to be sharing with you the newest collection from Bees Knees Lacquer. It is their Elden Ring Part 2 collection. So this collection is going to launch on July 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and the pre-order will end on July 28th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. There will be a 1,000 bottle soft cap available with these polishes that will be ready to ship so if you place your order on the earlier side you might not have to wait super long to get them. In addition to the Elden Ring Part 2 collection, there will also be some overpours available from the Daughter of the Moon Goddess and Hurricane Wars mystery bags. This collection is a nine-piece collection with a variety of finishes, but I have to say the overarching theme of this collection is Prugly. <laughs> so if that's why you love Bees Knees Lacquer, you are hopefully going to absolutely adore this collection. There are a lot of colors that made me feel like kind of fall vibes and like, oh. <laughs> Um, Prugly polishes are not my favorite typically, but Bees Knees Lacquer always has a way of making me love them. So yeah, nine polishes in this collection. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so we're going to be kind of taking a look at these in rainbow order, kind of. <laughs> I also tried to group them together by finish and uh yeah so we're starting with a gorgeous reddish shade this one's called goddess of rot love the name <laughs> i don't get it but i love it and it is a wine base with a strong gold to green to blue shifting shimmer so this one had my jaw on the floor i'm just gonna go ahead and tell you now beautiful gorgeous smooth formula you can see it is on the sheer side on that first coat but it builds up very quickly i would say if you've got super shorties you might be okay with this one in two coats however i did feel like that third coat really built this one up it deepened the color just a little bit and this is the kind of shifty shimmer i love to see from bees knees lacquer because the shimmer is there it's intense and vibrant but we have the opacity that is what i love <laughs> Um, so this one definitely built up to full opacity for me in three coats. Here's what it looks like with a glossy top coat in sunlight. You can see that gold shift just glows. So does the green and the blue at extreme angles. Um, they contrast gorgeously against that wine colored base. And then here is what it looks like in lower lighting. So I did want to include some comparisons. You'll have to let me know down in the comments how you feel about that because I do not by any means have a complete Bees Knees Lacquer collection. Um, some of my comparisons are from before Bees Knees closed and reopened. So let me know down in the comments what you think. This one I had some really close things to. Um, it was close to our familiar. Yes, it was closest to our familiar, but it was just a little bit on the sheer side compared to that one. That one's just a little bit more opaque and has a slightly deeper base. Curse You, it was close to as well, but Curse You has more of a purpley leaning base and the shimmer doesn't have as much of a gold feel to it. This next shade is called FFS, or as I like to call it, <laughs> I'm a dork. I'm sorry. This one is a rusty reddish brown with glowy blue shimmer. This one had a base that was on the sheer side and that really helped the blue shimmer stand out and glow. I did build this one up to three coats. I built up all the polishes in this collection up to three coats and I also want to add I didn't use any kind of base coat for any of these swatches today this one did still have some visible nail line after three coats so if that is not your thing you're going to want to pair it with some kind of blurring base coat personally that is not my thing but I wore this for two or three days and it didn't bother me the shimmer is so glowy it really distracts from the visible nail line oh <sighs> so here's what it looks like in three coats with a glossy top coat and sunlight a little bit of sunlight not full full intense sunlight um slightly overcast moment here but you can see that blue shimmer just takes over it's beautiful i really really enjoyed wearing this and i was surprised because the base color is not summer and i'm definitely a seasonal polish wearer so i compared this one to a few older bees knees lacquers it was similar ist that's not a word it was most similar to heart still beats which is quite old so if you are sad about missing that one maybe ffs will fill that void for you 
This next gorgeous purpley shade is called Lost Grace. It's a sheer grape purple with a strong gold to green to blue micro flake shimmer. This one may dry with some texture, so they recommend a glitter top coat or two layers of quick dry top coat. I didn't really experience a lot of texture with this one, but you know, everyone, your, your mileage may vary, <laughs> as they say. So this one definitely, true to description, is sheer. It could absolutely double as a topper. I don't think it would need, even need to go over a similar base color. The, the base is so lightly tinted. I think it would look great over a variety of things. Built up in three coats, I still saw a lot of visible nail line with this one. So again, if that bothers you, you may want to pair this with a blurring base coat or some kind of base. But yeah, really gorgeous color combo here. I love seeing those gold flakes against the warm purple base. Here's what it looks like in three coats with a glossy top coat. Those shifts were beautiful, beautiful. This one was super shifty. That's what I love about the sheer bases is they really allow the flakes and the shifts to stand out and glow. But yeah, you're going to see some visible nail line with this one, unless you have no visible nail line because your nails are super duper short. <laughs> the only thing I had to compare this one to was Maidenless from last month's release. As you can see, this one, Lost Grace, is much more saturated in its base color compared to Maidenless. Um, so maybe you liked that one, but you wish it were a little more saturated. Well, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I personally prefer Lost Grace, but they are both beautiful. This next shade is called Cuz, which makes me laugh. Um, it is a sheer grungy yellow with a strong pink to gold to green micro flake shimmer. Beastie's Lacquer is calling this their Gossamer formula. So note that. And note that with the Gossamer, Gossamer formula, it won't reach full opacity without a blurring base or some kind of undie. So... Shocker, this one was very sheer. <laughs> um, I saw a lot of visible nail line with this and three coats, no full opacity. It's just like a kiss of color on the nails. And I did find this base color to be very interesting for that kind of look. Cause most of the polishes in my collection that just give a kiss of color, they're like sheer pinks or light browns. No, this one is a yellow. <laughs> um, so I have nothing like it in my collection. Definitely super unique. Here in the sunlight, you can see just how sheer it is, and it's very unique. This is not, I'm going to be honest, the shade is a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but I know a lot of you love a Prugly. This one is for you. And here's what it looks like in three coats with a glossy top coat in the shaded lighting. The only thing I really had in my Bees Knees Lacquer collection to compare this to was your Golden Trader, which I know a lot of you really love. It's not like that at all. So if you love that one and you love this one, don't fear them being similar. They are not. <laughs> um, I would say that this one, the new one, cuz is much more sheer than your Golden Trader. <laughs> this next one, I I'm not going to pretend to know how the name is supposed to sound. So I'm going to say it's called Placidu Sucks. <laughs> and it is a sandy tan lion cousin with pink to gold shimmer and a ton of hollow flakes. I always get excited when I hear the words lion cousin, lion sibling. Instantly, my interest is piqued. So this one is of the sheer varieties of the Lion Cousins. You can see on that initial coat, we don't get a whole lot of color on the nails. It just kind of tints a little bit. Um, as you continue to build it up in three coats, you definitely do get to see that prugly, sandy tan color. It's interesting it's described as a sandy tan. I felt like it was like a yellowy olive. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you definitely get to see that color once it's built up in three coats. However, I did have prominent nail line with this one. So if that's not your thing, you're going to want to pair this with a blurring base coat. Here's three coats with a glossy top coat in sunlight. Very, very glowy color. Uh, the shimmer anyway, the base color again, a little outside of my comfort zone, but look how pretty in lower lighting. I'll be honest. When I was watching it initially, I was like, mm, I might pass this on to a friend, but when I saw it in the shade, I was like, mm, okay, no, I'm keeping it. <laughs> um, I did want to show it next to a release from last month called The Golden Path, which I absolutely loved. You can see that the base color of this newer shade is quite a bit more green leaning um, and a lot less yellow, more grungy for sure. 
And continuing on with our lion cousins, this one's called Elden Beast. It's a smoky plum lion cousin with gold to green shimmer and a ton of hollow flakes. I'm screaming inside. <laughs> this one was just completely beautiful. Decent decent you know coverage on that first coat it did build up to full opacity no problem for me in three coats and i think almost everyone will want three coats with this one if you've got super long nails i feel like maybe you would have a little visible nail line even in three coats with this polish but if your nails are my length or close i think three coats will suffice i loved how the gold shimmer popped in this one against that smoky base I don't know it just gave me like the sun coming out after a storm it's just so contrasting very glowy the hollow sparkles and then it's beautiful in lower lighting as well so gorgeous i did not include any comparisons for this shade because i had nothing like it in my bees knees lacquer collection or my entire collection to be honest up next we have obnoxious trumpet sounds love the name of that one this is a new gold lion cousin and it's a pale gray with gold to green shimmer and a ton of hollow flakes Whew. So like the kind of sandy tan color we looked at before, this one's definitely on the sheer side. I almost, I mean, I felt like when I swatched it, I thought it had a clear base. And because really all I see on the nails after I swatched it are all of those flakes and shimmer. I really didn't see a whole lot of base color. For that reason, this would make an excellent topper as well as a standalone polish. Here's what it looks like in three coats built up on its own with a glossy top coat. Because the base is so sheer, you get a lot of shift from that shimmer. I did find myself wishing this was just a little bit more opaque, um, but I think the sheerness makes it stand out. It's beautiful and lower lighting as well. Like that gold and green pigment really looks like flaky goodness. It's so, so pretty. So comparisons, I thought I would have a, something, something similar to this. Um, I didn't. I thought that how much for a turnip, you know, had similar shifts in the shimmer, but the base was a lot more opaque. It was also deeper in color. And the meteorite really doesn't have the gold shift in the shimmer. And yeah, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it's nothing like obnoxious trumpet sounds. And next we have a few magnetics. This one is called Crabs is Bugs. And this one is a green leaning gray with fine particle magnetic holographic shimmer. The maker left a note that the finer particle gives it a better holographic flame. And here you can see applying the magnet, all of that pigment just pulls together and reveals that kind of greeny grayed out jelly base. So I am using one of those 30 pound magnets and this was actually my first time using it. I love it, but that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> I accidentally skipped my second coat, uh, filming the second coat here. So here's three coats. Um, you can see it builds up very well and using the velvet technique or using this kind of magnet got me close to full opacity. I really didn't notice my nail line. Like, look how beautiful this is. I'm freaking out, but I'm trying to keep it together. Um, <laughs> um, however, when I use the cat eye method, which I will show you what that looks like here in a, in a little bit, that did give me prominent visible nail lines. So you can see pointer finger pinky. I used the 30 pound magnet, the horseshoe magnet, and then middle and ring finger, the cat eye. Pick what you like. I really liked the velvet look. I just couldn't get over those shifts. The hollow is on the subtle side, but it is beautiful. It's that kind of hollow that you will see if you look at it in sunlight, but in indoor lighting, probably not. And then here's what it looks like just built up three coats on its own without the magnet. You still get to see that hollow, but it just kind of looks like a hazy, sheer holographic polish. And I have no comparisons for either of the magnetic polishes. This one's called Dancing Queens, and this is the failed menorah formula reborn <laughs> it's described as being a nude with larger particle silver magnetic shimmer and this is not the same magnetic shimmer seen in skyfire in case you were wondering on application this one was very sheer but again with this horseshoe magnet the velvet technique whatever um you are going to be so distracted by the silver magnetic particle you're really not going to notice a whole lot of nail line unless your nails are a lot longer than mine 
However, using the cat eye magnet, I saw a ton of nail line. Oh my gosh, you all, I am literally freaking out. <laughs> Um, like this is going right into my fall rack. I just cannot get over how this looks. Like I was staring at my nails for the longest time. So here's what it looks like built up in three coats with a glossy top coat. All coats on all my magnetic swatches were magnetized. Love the velvet effect. Cat eye is cool too, but like I thought the velvet effect really let that silver particle shine. Like it is wild. Here's what it looks like in lower lighting. Also cool, but like, come on. <laughs> and then here's what it looks like built up in three coats without magnetizing. I would never. <laughs> I love how it looks magnetized and I am way too lazy for magnetic polishes. And if you place your order by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on July 21st, then you will get this gift uh, with purchase polish called Poison Mist. This one is described as being a sheer olive with glowy blue to purple shimmer. It's a prugly <laughs> for sure um, on application. It was really interesting. It definitely had a jelly lean, but because the blue shimmer is so fine, it kind of had, I don't know, like, like a fullness and kind of like creaminess to it. I don't know if that's making any sense. Regardless, in three coats, you will have significant visible nail line. This is a sheer shade, but I thought, you know, the shimmer did distract some from the visible nail line. Personally, I would wear this with a blurring base or some kind of olive -y cream. That'd be so beautiful. So here's three coats with a glossy top coat in sunlight. This is like exactly what I think of when I think of bee's knees. <laughs> and then in lower lighting, the shimmer just kind of takes over. So that was Bee's Knees Lacquer Elden Ring Part 2 collection. Let me know all of your thoughts. I'm sure you have a lot down in the comments. So favorites, um, here's what they are. I have to give a shout out to FFS. I don't know what that means or what it stands for, but this one was, oh, so interesting. I feel like this base color, this kind of like raisiny color has been so popular, like a kind of brown with a little bit of purple in it or a brown with a little bit of red in it um, has been really popular this year. I've seen a lot of polishes release with this base color, but I haven't seen any that have this really vibrant blue purple shift. And I think that one makes this so unique. Um, again, I know it's not fall, but this one feels fall to me and it kind of like makes me want, makes me want fall already, which I love summer. So I also really enjoyed Goddess of Rot. I also really enjoyed Goddess of Rot. The base color for this one was just so rich and saturated. Um, this one definitely felt like it could be more of a transitional shade if you're a seasonal polish wearer from summer into fall because you know, aspects of this polish were so vibrant and intense that it felt summery, um, but it kind of is a little bit, you know, of a vampier shade. I also really, really enjoyed Elden Beast. For me, these line cousins are just like the gift that keep on giving. I never get tired of them. And this one to me feels super, super unique. I feel like I'm acquiring so many of them at this point that I'm like, surely soon, Sarah is going to like start releasing some that feel like dupes. To me, this feels like nothing else that I have. Um, the kind of grungy purpley gray base. I guess all of my favorites are kind of purpley. That's weird. I don't usually like purple polish, uh, but the kind of grungy purple base combined with like the gold, antique gold, olivey shimmer. It's so pretty. And I do have to give a special shout out to the magnetics. I don't reach for magnetics super often, but I do have to say these make me want to. They were really, really cool. So those were my top picks. Let me know yours down in the comments. What are you gonna grab from this collection? I will link everything you need down in the description box so you can check out Bees Knees Lacquer site and their social media. And I have my Instagram down there too if you'd like to see some additional swatches. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.